and All right, welcome, and welcome back to Meet back the Candidates. To the candidates. I am glad you're am taking glad out the time, taking to, out time join to join us for this us series of series interesting, of interesting interviews, interviews with candidates with running, candidates uh, running uh, this November 8th. Uh, uh, tonight, I have with me another candidate for the uh, Flint School I Board. Tonight, I have with me another candidate for the Flint School Board. And I'm going to let her introduce herself as her and I'm video let her goes introduce fuzzy. Herself as her video goes fuzzy. Hey, Linda, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Paul? I am enjoying life. Now, I understand I you're at a life. conference. Now, I understand you're at a conference. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm at the um, Michigan Association of School Board Workers Conference up in Traverse City, Michigan. All right. Well, listen. All right. Before well, listen, we get to that, before we get to why that, why don't you tell everybody, don't you a, little tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, I am a lifetime. I'm a lifetime resident of the city of Flint. I have grew up. I grew up in the city of Flint. I graduated from Flint Northern High School. And I also um, gra graduated my community college in the University of Michigan, Flint. All my children, our four children, also graduated from Flint schools. They graduated from all four graduated from Northwestern High School, city of Flint. I, and like I said, I've been a lifetime resident. I have served on many boards in the city of Flint and many other uh, organizations and agencies. I recently retired from the state of Michigan, Department of Health and Human Services in January of 2022 this year. And I was appointed March 16th to serve on the school board, uh, fulfilling the role of Adrian uh, Walker. And I'm up for a reelection, six year term. All right, so now All right, you're so a Flint girl. girl. Yes, I'm a Flintstone. Tell me about your Tell earliest, me about your memory, earliest of memory of your, of your elementary school elementary education, school here, education in here in Plum. Okay, I attended uh, Stewart Elementary. Well, first of all, I need I got to go back. I was born on Jameson. I, I lived on Jameson uh, Street. It was over there by between North and Industrial Street. I attended Parkland School, which is now um, is it has now uh, been demolished, which was located behind Burston Fieldhouse. I used to swim at Burston Field House um, during the early years. That was way back in the 60s, if I'm telling my age, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then later I went to Stewart, and then I graduated from Flint Northern High School. All right, so now what do you remember the most uh, about your schooling in Flint and I guess, what did you like about it and what didn't you like and, and about it? I guess, what did you like about it and what did you like about well, it? Well, I tell you, what I liked most, Paul, was the fact that our schools were open basically almost seven days per week, not just the normal school hours. We had activities on Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The schools were the um, community centers that we have now. They were basically the community center and they were strategically located throughout the city of Flint. So nobody had to drive to a community center. The center was located right in your neighborhood and that was your local school. And okay. I remember ice skating okay. at, at Stewart School. I remember uh, Thanksgiving games and it was a tradition for everybody in the city of Flint to attend a, a game and it was always central northern <laughs> that was the big the two big rivalries back then and on thanksgiving day you were not you wouldn't be nobody in the city of flint Holly was at home they would be at the atwood stadium for that game those are my most fondest memories and then we would go over to either my family's house or relatives homes you know and we would have dinner all right, nice, um, nice. You know, I, I, to this day, I, I, I never rode a school bus. I, you know, we, I didn't ride, we didn't ride school buses. We had to walk to school. Okay. 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 Uh, tell me this. What was your uh, first tell job? Tell me this. What was your first job? My first job was working at Clara Bur Barton. <laughs> Let me get it right. Clara Barton. Clara. Barton 
nursing home as a nurse's aide. Okay. That was my first job. Okay. I was age 17 when I received my first job. So now it doesn't sound like you went into the uh, nursing home field. Was there a reason? Um, I didn't like human suffering. I didn't like needles. I couldn't get past those needles, believe it or not. I couldn't not get past that. human suffering. You know, I would cry just as hard as a baby get the shot. You know, I didn't really, you know, I just, I just don't like needles. It takes a special kind of person to deal with that on a day to day basis. Basically, the human suffering. You know, in the nursing home. Uh, we dealt with a lot of death, you know, and and I, I can deal with that more so than the humans, the suffering. Talk to me about your high school career. How was that? My high school career? Let me, yeah. let me look. I've been out of high school 50 years. Yeah. Let me see. Well, unfortunately, I wanted to run track. I did run track at Whittier. Unfortunately, it was, we was, our family was in a car accident and I had a lot of injury to my my left leg, uh, my muscle was torn out of my leg, uh, torn muscles in my leg, that, and I had to have stitches, and my leg was like broken three different places. So it took me like almost six months to heal. So I was unable to run track. But uh, let's see, I I studied wait, science. Wait, 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 I like wait, 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 yeah. Can you talk about Can you talk about it? Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Um, my, you know, back then you can drive 90 miles an hour. We had a station wagon. Um, that was we. My father bought a station wagon at Hank Graff, and Hank Graff was located across from City Flint City Hall. You know, right there where the, where a lot of people use that as a campaign hall. Um, campaigns right now. Yes. Um, it was Hank Graff, and he bought a, a, a station wagon, so we were going on a vacation. So we went on a vacation, and we were going down. I remember 23, we was going to Chicago to visit our aunt, my my mother's, um, well, actually, my mother's sister-in-law. And um, it was a bunch of us in the car, about 10 of us. It was eight kids and two adults. And uh, we had stopped at a location to get air in the tire. And the, the story is they put too much air in the tire. We had a blowout. We had a blowout somewhere near Lansing heading towards uh, uh, Chicago. I think if I'm not mistaken, somewhere along that line. It was, uh, well, anyway, to make a long story short, we was all thrown out of the station wagon. He went on, it, it, uh, my mother, put on brakes and I understand my father told her not to put on brakes. My mother was driving, told her not to put on brakes, but to slow down. But she panicked, put on brakes and the car flipped over in a ditch. It flipped over several times and I was the only one left in the car pent in the you know, back seat. But they state, uh, the police said, well, if we had been in a, well, they didn't have compact cars back then, but if we had been in a something other than a station wagon there may have been a loss of lives but wow. nobody lost their life we just cut up real bad and I remember that much but uh, it took me a while to heal I was a little disappointed but I actually almost lost my leg and mm -hmm. um, at the time my doctor was Dr. Uh, Wendell Williams okay. and he got a he called in a specialist and he, they saved my leg you know, but it's it's just a long, long story. So, and how old were um, you? But I, I never did participate in sports. And, you know, I didn't get a chance to participate in sports because it still took a you know while to heal. It took it took a little bit to heal. But I, I'm glad to be alive. You know, I didn't nobody lost their life. We just, you know, cut up real bad. Some of a few of us were. Well, that's amazing. Uh, I'm going to ask, how old were you when this accident took place? And is this um, uh, what made you decide to join the school board? <laughs> yeah, I was age seven. I was age, uh, not 17. I was about, I was in middle school when that ap accident happened. Okay. Uh huh. So about the sixth grade, seventh. Sixth grade, seventh grade. Mm -hmm. All right. So 
you were uh, appointed to the school board uh, to take a vacancy, right? Yes, Adrian Walker. What made you decide to take that? Uh, I guess somebody recommended you? Well, that and um, yes, and I, was, I, I became interested in serving. I had to think about it. I actually had to pray about it because I just retired in January and I had not planned on um, joining any more boards because I currently serve on two. So this makes three. I okay. serve on the uh, Motherly Intercession um, Board as a vice president and I, that um, the, they design programs, they facilitate programs and services for children of incarcerated parents. Okay. And I also serve on the Ethic and Accountability commission, uh, Board, not Commission, Board, City of Flint. Tell me, what, what's the most surprising thing that you've had to deal with as a board member? Um, uh, board decorum, um, following policies and procedures, and making some crucial decisions about some of the activities um, that, that relates to the school of our district, our district. How about the opposite? What, what have been some of the biggest rewards for you? Oh, the biggest the reward is the appreciation of the teachers, the students, the parents, uh, working alongside with the administration um, on you know dealing with different issues. Uh, we do have a. Um, a very nice um, management staff, I must say. And working with, you know, the board, the board in general, and the public, the community, the community pays attention. Um, they ask questions, they give uh, us information and sometimes direction. Okay, now, you know, the Flint School Board has been, been suffering some great challenges uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a four-year term that you're uh, running for? I'm running for a six-year term. A six-year term. Yeah. Six years from now, what are you hoping to walk away with? I'm hoping we can walk, uh, I can walk away with a balanced school district in terms of the number of buildings that we currently have existing, um, that we will have possibly a new high school or renovated high school in a, in a centralized area and hope, hopefully for new elementary schools. And I'm also hoping that um, we also regain um, our students back to the uh, Flint Public Schools. Okay, so there's going to be a big uh, a push, I guess, for uh, getting more students. I mean, we just have a natural loss of people in the city of Flint, as well as to uh, charter schools as well. How do you yeah. see those charter schools affecting um, uh, your role on the board? Is there anything you can do? Well, um, I my focus have not been on the charter charter schools. My focus has been in the public saving the public schools because we do um, compete with, you know, after the pandemic, we compete with home schools, private schools, charter schools, online schools. And I'm trying to think of other, and, and other schools in other districts. Okay. Well, and I you know, we don't have a school in the third war. We have no school in the third war. And there's no high school? I mean, you mean no elementary school? No middle school? There's no high school nor elementary school in the third war. Does that, does and the population... And we have had, well, no, they, they closed the schools. Um, they made that decision, previous administration and boards made that de decision to close the schools. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if they received any uh, community or, input. I'm sure they did. I remember when they closed uh, North, uh, Northwestern and Carpenter Road School. And in those areas, you have six apartment complexes, middle and low income apartment complexes. A lot of kids. You have, 
yeah, six and no school. You know, and um, also, you know, there's a lot of findings that I found surprising when I took office in uh, March. And I've still been learning a lot since then about the demographics and the situation of our, our public school here in the city of Flint and the efforts being made now. Um, it's a lot. Um, we have no school in the third war and we have Shiloh Commons apartment complex. We have Eagle Ridge. We have Aldridge Place. We have on Carpenter Road, we have River Village, Ridgecrest Apartments. And on Boulevard Drive, we have that uh, apartment comp townhouses over there. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, six housing developments with no school. No school to service. Therefore, uh, I live off of Branch Road. Most of those students attend Genesee, Kersley. I see Eagle Ridge buses coming over there. You know, um, Richfield Academy and, uh, you know, different school districts. So now coming to you... pick up our children, the Flint children on the Flint side of the line and taking them to other districts. So could we do could we do the same thing perhaps with busing and take them to where they need to go within the Flint Community School District? Oh sure. You know, but it's the parents' choice and the parents have a reason, you know, for maybe not um, enrolling their children in, in the Flint school system. But you know, we get we just have to have a conversation. And um but like I say, there's no school in the, in the third war. And many of the kids um, that I see going to other districts live in the third war. All right. Well, listen, I, I know it's getting late there, and I really appreciate you spending this time with me. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to go ahead and look in your camera and convince us to vote for Linda Booz. Okay. Um I am dedicated and always have been a uh, grassroots person here in the city of Flint. I care about the, our, my city. I care about the citizens. And I, I want you to vote for me because I, my focus will be the students and the parents and our teachers and our parapros and all the other staff members at the Flint Community Schools. Um, I'll be an advocate, and that's why I'm here now. I've been um, going to trainings through the Michigan Association of School Board um, Association since April, trying to learn and be a better uh, school board member, because it's a lot to know. We have a high responsibility, and you can't come in as a board member with your own agenda or your own um, um, motives. Um, I mean, well, I wouldn't, I don't want to say motives, your own, um, for lack of a better word, um, you can't come in with your own agenda. You have to come in and look uh, and work with um, the board as a whole make a decision, you do a lot of decision making, a lot of decision making, you have to make sound decisions and you have to carry yourself, you have integrity and respect for all board members regardless and, and, and the community, you know, um, it, you can't make anything personal. So I have those attributes, I have served on many boards and uh, many organizations. I understand the city of Flint. I have a, a, a lot of knowledge about our city. And um, we trying to, we can't look back. We have to move forward. So to help the schools move, move forward, and I advise you to vote for me and not just me. There's a seven board um, membership, seven board members. And we, we have uh, five seats. 
And we have 15 candidates running for those seats. Make sure you do your homework. You know, all right. communicate with all of us. If you have any questions, you can always contact me and I can give you information about myself. But um, vote for me because I do have the district at heart. All right. Well, listen, Linda, thank you so much for joining us here on Meet the Candidates. I want to thank you thank guys you. for watching as well. Remember, November 8th, get out and vote. Don't go by yourself, guys. Take a friend who has a friend who has yeah. a friend who has a friend. Y you get the point. As always, yeah. there'll be more after this. And after this mm -hmm. is your life. someone hearing here uh, with a, a special opportunity for you uh, actually that was given to us YouTube has invited us to participate in the sponsorship program so they are have set up uh, some kind of system to allow you guys to support the channel uh, there should be a button down here somewhere join support sponsor uh, click it <laughs> see what it says uh, I, I want to assure you that all the content that we always do uh, is still going to remain for you. Don't have to be a sponsor or a supporter to enjoy what we do here at Spectacle Productions, but you can be extra appreciated if you do. All right, down here, join sponsor. <sighs> See what happens. All right. Um, we're also considering starting a new show for those that do choose to sponsor, and we're calling it the Meeting After the Meeting. And we'll allow you to be guests and hosts and help come up with the content and not maybe make you a star. I do not know. All right. But rest assured, I'm enjoying the life I'm living just until I can live the life I'll enjoy. And your support and our sponsorship will get us even closer to that. Remember, there'll be more, as always, after this. And, and after this, this is your life. Go out and live it. Peace.